there's there's a couple of pieces. He was he was one hell of a drinker as well, <laughs> and uh, it, it it just a a, a, a brilliant uh, performer apparently, and and he wrote poems and he uh, he he went around all over the place. So this it, uh, Tolo O'Carolan and uh, he. It, it, his pieces were just kind of very, very short and only written in one line and then passed on by ear. But he was just a, 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 a traveller, went around all over the place. I'll just play it. It's a really fun... I, I put together... Put he, was, together he was blind from the age of eight, is that right? Yeah, he was blind from the age of eight and a, <laughs> and a harpist. And uh, this title, Homo Potest Bibere, um, it was a statement from uh, one of his friends who, and it just means this man can drink. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and he's got, he, there's several of his um, portraits of the people, uh, the people that he worked with. And this little story that I've put together from store from anecdotal stories and his writings of what happened on a particular evening when they were playing uh, he and some friends were were playing in a in a pub and the landlady got up and started dancing um and uh, and then uh, there was interplay between the musicians where they were just improvising stuff and then the tunes were, anyway, shut up, Connor, and I'll play it. <laughs> um, because they're single lines, I've had to flesh out everything else. So let's see what it does. a drink <laughs> and then then the leader takes up and this is the ode to which Finished a piece, and they're off solo. This means this is 
Another bottle, it's called. Nearly done. Just, just this is, this is, this anyway. and this is called the lamentation of Owen O'Neill. It's a beautiful melody, and um, the, you'll hear the melody on its own first, and then the uh, I've then started to add in the harmonies and follow the path of what the 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 tune's actually doing. So. is adding harmonies and kind of gestures that they would have understood at, mm -hmm. at the time so that you, you've got the second line be, being added with So you've got lots of sustained things, and then with the third line coming in as well, that's picking up on the lamentations or the feeling in a minor key, so that, that then it it expands. And I think anybody who's been dealing with O'Carolan's music uh, has been faced with the same thing. There was no written down harmony of any kind. And it was only his melodies that were passed on. And then, you know, as in any folk, uh, the, the idea of a passed on melody, people add their own responses to their understanding of where it's going and what their experience is. This is his, his melody. This is what he wrote. And and you can hear flutes and violins and playing along with it. Then the change of softness, soft and loud, always being used, and back again. And then when you get to places like that, you, you've, you've got to add, add uh, rhythm and, and uh, joy to, to, to what's happening. And so I, I, it, it's like you've got a, 
a group of folk underneath it d clapping their hands and banging their feet and uh, so <laughs> And the cello is the double bass. And and that fits in by having um harmony on the under underlying uh, uh from the from the first and second violins and then the violas in uh, as well. And what I find a, a, a amazing about O'Carolan and the time, when you think about it, this was before Bach was born. And uh, Bach is, is growing up in Europe and his materials are being passed around and printed. In They didn't have that in Ireland. you know. And yet Irish music was still progressing in a similar way. Uh, to to that in Europe in terms of people were either writing things down or just going by what they hear. And uh, and a lot of it was controlled by the Catholic Church as well in terms of that uh, you mustn't get above your station and so on. And, and just uh, uh, they, they did a lot of damage with all this. Some of O'Carolan's, because he was a drinker, um, the parish priest of the place where he used to live tore up most of his music uh, because he was a blasphemer and a, mm. and a devil and so on. And the, the music that's come down to us has only come down to us through other people archiving uh, his stuff. And then the first piece was actually printed in 1790. The, the, there's a thing here that he, he put here. He's a fool who gives over to the liquor. It softens the skin flint at once. It urges the so slow coach on quicker, gives spirit and brains to the dunce. This is all about the good things about, <laughs> about uh, whiskey, especially. The man who is dumb as a rule discovers a great deal to say, while he <laughs> who is banished since Yule will talk in an amorous way. It'll, it's drink that uplifts the poltroon and gives battle in France and in Spain. Now here is an end of my tune. When you've filled up that bumper again. And <laughs> he, he, would, he would write these things. He was, he was like a, a Baroque rapper that he would play <laughs> and, and make up the words at the same time. I mean, that was a... Uh, a translation that Seamus Heaney